I'm really enjoying this game series so far. I'm actually enjoying it more than more than I thought I would. And I'm so glad I have the trilogy, the HD trilogy back. So much. Court is now in session for the trial of Miss May F.A. The prosec- Ooh. I recognize him from, uh... So, there is a YouTube group that is called, um, Tombstone, Living Tombstone, and they do, like, gaming parodies, songs, and they fully animate them, and one of them is with Phoenix Wright. So that's really my only glimpse into the universe, but that's how I recognized him right off the bat. Hey, Zar. So we finish up the last trial. And our boss was murdered, so he yes, <laughs> absolutely. Um, so here we go, and this is us. We're a little more confident this time. I better not show any signs of weakness today, or he'll be on me in an instant, Mr. Edgeworth. Please give the court your opening statement. Thank you, your honor. The defendant, Miss Mayafe, was at the scene of the crime. Prosecution has evidence she committed this murder. <laughs> and we have a witness who saw her do it. Prosecution sees no reason to doubt the facts of this case, Your Honor. I see. Thank you, Mr. Edgeworth. Let's begin then. If we may call our first witness, Your Honor, the prosecution calls the chief officer at the scene, Detective Gumshoe. Witness, please state your name and profession to the court. Sir, my name's Dick Gumshoe, sir. I'm the detective in charge of homicides down in the precinct, sir. Detective Gumshoe, please describe for us the details of this murder. Very well, sir. Let us use this floor map of the office to explain. <laughs> uh, yes. This is the body. Just the body. It was found by the window. Here. And the cause of death? Loss of blood due to being struck by a blunt object, sir. The murder weapon was a statue of the thinker. Found next to the body, sir. It was heavy enough to be a deadly weapon, even in a girl's hand, sir. The court accepts the statue as evidence. Yes. They're still calling it a statue. Floor plans added to the court record. Now, detective. Y yes, sir. You you immediately arrested Miss Maya Fay, who was found at the scene, correct? Can you tell me why? Yes, sir. I had hard evidence she did it, sir. Hmm. Detective Gumshoe, please testify to the court about this hard evidence. As soon as the phone call came in, I rushed to the scene. There were two people there already. The defendant, Ms. May Fay, and the lawyer, Mr. Phoenix Wright. <laughs> I immediately arrested Miss Mayor Fay. Why? We had a witness account describing her. The witness saw Miss Mayor Fay at the very moment of the murder. Hmm. Very moment, you say? Very well, Mr. Wright. You may begin your cross examination. 
Yes, Your Honor. Press examine. What? I couldn't see a single contradiction in that testimony. Whoosh. <laughs> I just threw something at me. What's this? And the sister couldn't find any contradictions in a witness testimony. Ah, how convenient. She would bluff it and press the witness on every detail. The witness always slips up and says something wrong. It worked lots of times. <laughs> I should have expected that you would know some of her sister's tricks. Alright, let's give this a try. Something the matter? No, Your Honor. I'd like to begin my cross-examination. I'm going to question everything this man says. <laughs> Hold it! Hmm. Alright, I press. Not sure it did much, though. Right. Please continue. Oh, when the silent- when the music cuts and it's silent, I know I'm doing something right. <laughs> yeah? I hear correctly. You said you arrested her because you had hard evidence she did it, correct? Huh? Did- did I say that? Me? Yeah? I heard you say it. You did- <laughs> <laughs> What? Miss May is a suspicious, and she sure isn't pink, pal. Or Miss May. Well, I guess she is pink. That's enough, Detective Gumshoe. Do you have any more solid proof other than her claim, Detective? Um... I guess pressing can't have its advantages. Yes! <laughs> this. This is why I love the game. Just a little bit more. Sorry, I got the order of things mixed up in my testimony, your honor, sir. There was something I should have told you about first, your honor. Very well, detective. Let's hear your testimony again. Alright. I found a memo written on a piece of paper next to the victim's body. On it, the word Maya was clearly written in blood. Lab results showed the blood was the victim's. Also, there was blood found on the victim's fingers. Before she died, the victim wrote the killer's name. How do you like that? That's my hard evidence. Ah, uh, eh, I know. I'm really embarrassed I forgot about it, your honor, sir. Try to be more careful. Very well. The defense may begin its cross-examination. All right. Mm-hmm. All right. Yeah, that's important. Uh. <laughs> Aww. 
We tried. In books and movies. Oof. Ah. Ha! Don't you find it a little odd that the victim would write down a name? Especially the name of her own sister? Ah. Uh, yeah, actually. You got a point, pal. Stop right there. Oh no. Edgelord. The witness's opinion on the matter is irrelevant. The facts are clear. The victim wrote down the name of the accused. The victim told us the name of her killer. testimony. Alright. There has to be a contradiction in there somewhere. Let's find it. Oh no, that's not the point I wanted to make. Oh no! I mean, sure? I did. Oh. Uh. Oh no. I mean, he's right, but come on. Oh no. Well, detective, tell us what was written on the memo you found. He ga- yeah. He gave me the look alright. On it, the word Maya was clearly written in blood. I'm just gonna try everything. Ooh. <laughs> yep, absolutely. I'm gonna look at what I have to offer because I have the layout. I should look at this sometime. We have the glass shards that I'm not quite seeing the picture yet. Yeah, if death was instantaneous, then how could she write the name? Oh, the music stopped. I think I did something right. Snacks, 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 favorites. 
to is accusing the defendant, my FA. That's really what you're saying. What? what This isn't one of those lawyer tricks now, is it? Of course she wrote it. Who else could have? You have it backwards, detective. B backwards The victim is the only person who would absolutely not have written it. There's a report from your department, detective. Immediate death due to a blow to a blunt object. I'm so sorry that took me a while to get to there. She died immediately. But no but I knew way out of this one, detective. <laughs> the defense has a point. Someone who died immediately wouldn't have had the time to write anything down. I beg your pardon, but when exactly did you obtain that autopsy report? Oh no! What, when? It was the... Oh no. Was it the day after? Yeah, because we were questioned all night, so we were- it was the day after the murder. Outdated? What? No. No. Is this where- okay, so... Zdar, one thing you missed is that... Edgeworth is kind of like there have been rumors circulating that he does back alley deals and forged evidence so I'm thinking that this is going to be one of those like he redid the autopsy to make it say something else at his request yeah it's not spoilers if I catch you up <laughs> well it's almost immediate due to a blow from a blunt object, but there is a possibility the victim lived for several minutes after the blow. I received these results this morning. No, no wait! <laughs> Your Honor, it's quite easy to imagine that the victim did have time to write Maya. That is all. I see. Damn you, Edgeworth! I should have known you had something up your sleeve. Why, Miss Wright, you look shocked. Something you want to say? Um, <laughs> I am a sham. The detective's a sham. Ooh. <laughs> yes, I am the sham. <laughs> yeah. Mr. Wright, the defense will refrain from personal attacks on the prosecution. <laughs> no matter, Your Honor. Mr. Wright, say what you will, the evidence in this court is undeniable. Your Honor, I submit this report to the court. Uh, understood. Let's see. Might have lived for a few minutes after being hit. Mm. The evidence strongly suggests the victim was identifying the killer. I suppose that's the obvious conclusion, yes? Why are you freaking bowing? The prosecution would like to call its next witness. This poor, innocent girl saw the murder with her own eyes! <laughs> exactly what part of her is innocent? Jeez. Witness, your name please. April May, at your service. Wink. Even the way she's. Oh man. <laughs> the 
this will refrain from what's <laughs> winking. Even the judge is just like, oh god, no, not today. I just want to go home. Aww, yes, your honor. This is not good. She's already captured the heart of every- Tell us, where were you on the night of September 5th? When the murder occurred. Um, gee, I was like in my hotel room. <laughs> I checked in right after lunch. And this hotel is directly across from the Fay and Co. law offices. Mm, that's right, big boy. Please testify to the court about what you saw. Oh no. We're gonna have to see her for several minutes. Oh no. It was like 9 o'clock at night. I looked out the window, you know? And then, ooh, I saw a woman with long hair being attacked. The one attacking her was a mousy girl sitting in the defendant's chair. Then the woman, like, dodged to one side and ran away. But that girl, she caught up to her and, and she hit her. And the woman with the long hair, she kind of slumped. The end. That's all I saw. Every little bitsy witsy. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. Well, Your Honor. I see. It is a remarkably solid testimony. <laughs> I don't see any of the trouble to witness any way, Your Honor. <laughs> yes, Mr. Wright. In, in the judge's mind, he's just like, gosh, Your Honor, I almost had her out of the courtroom. What about my cross-examination? I thought the witness testimony just now was quite firm, didn't you? Mr. Wright, I understand you were Miss Mia Faye's understudy, were you not? You must know her techniques well. Her cowardly way of finding tiny faults in perfectly good testimonies. Hey, hey how dare you! <laughs> yes, I'm doing it. I gladly proceed with the cross-examination. If only because I have a feeling Edgeworth doesn't want me to. <laughs> hey, if that's gonna inconvenience you, well, by golly, let me do it anyway. She has to have some weakness. Very well. You may begin your cross-examination. Alright. We're gonna press Q on everything. It was like... Nine o'clock at night. I looked out the window, you know? Oh. Huh? Well, you know. She, she had girlish physique. Women know these things. Look, I, I just know, okay? Her testimony is bulletproof, Your Honor. That's right. Mm. I'm gonna question it anyway. I don't mean it like that. Oh no! Oh my goodness. You like my Laureen? <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I think she saw something, but I think she's lying. <laughs> What's the meaning of this? Oh no. Yes, 
with infamy. Somebody tell me because I'm clueless about this, I mean. Okay. If you had really witnessed my client, Maya Faye, you would have noticed her clothes before noticing her physique. No one wears clothes like this on a daily basis, except her. And I am no expert on fashion, but her hairdo looks far from normal to me. <laughs> I'm not an expert on fashion, but let me just swoop all of this back. However, the witness testimony mentions neither of these things. The testimony is bogus. But, but, still, we don't know if she was dressed that way the night of the murder. She was, your honor. I saw her. And so did Detective Gumshoe. What do you say to that, Miss Faye? <laughs> Rawr! <laughs> really? What are you trying to say, you mean lawyer? I, I saw what I saw. I just didn't think all the trifling little details were necessary, darling. Miss May, the court would like to remind you to please omit nothing from your testimony. What was that in the beginning? No. No. <laughs> your testimony again, if you would. Damn, I almost had her. <laughs> We've seen it. Oh no. I did see everything. I did. The victim, the woman, dodged the first attack and ran off to the right. And then the girl in the hippie clothes ran after her. And then she hit her with that weapon. I saw it. I did. That, that clock. Um, the statuary clock? The thinker, I think? Well... Does the accuracy of my report not startle you? Hee <laughs> hee. It's been submitted into evidence as a statue. They're not calling it a clock anymore. Uh, I see. I only wish you had been so detailed from the beginning. Please begin the cross examination. Oh, I will. Did see everything. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> well, don't look so sour, Mr. Lawyer. You can't win them all. Wait, maybe I gotta use this? Mm. I'll try it. It's what my gut feeling is telling me. There we go. Revealing. I was gonna talk about how the music changed, so I thought we were on the right track, and then she just goes into this. Come on, guys. You just said that the statue of the thinker was a clock, but there's no way of knowing that just by looking at it. Another person in much the same position as you recently called this a clock too, and he was found guilty of murder. Order? Miss May, can you explain how you know this was a clock? Oh, um. The witness saw the murder with her own eyes. That's all that's important here. The defense is trying to confuse the issue with trivial concerns. Yes. Yes, of course. You will withdraw your question. No, we were- 
We were on to something. Questions are all I have. <laughs> I was gonna say, you can't say, you can't have a plural. It was only one. We've only had one trial before this. And it was with the same judge, too. Yeah! Alright. Whew! That was close. If he stopped me there, the trial would've been over! Huh? What? So what happens now? What happens now is you answer my question! How did you know it was a clock? What? That's because I heard it? Yes, I heard it say the time. So, you've been to the law offices of Faye and Co. No, no, hey, I didn't say that. Why would I go there? I heard it from my hotel room, hee <laughs> hee. The law offices of Faye and Co, where the murder took place, is very close to the hotel. She could have easily heard the clock. I doubt that. I doubt. No. I can't give up. <laughs> Press X to doubt. Not satisfied because. Yeah, it wouldn't have rung because it was hit on the other side. Yeah. Inconceivable! Oh, yeah! All of the clock pieces were taken out. That's right. Bum bum bum! How could you possibly? Just take a look. Right now! I swear, if the pieces were put back in before this, I swear. Okay, thank goodness. Whew. It's quite empty. Is it right? Would you care to explain to the court the meaning of this? <laughs> it's as you can see. The clock was empty. It couldn't have rung. Therefore, this witness is a big fat liar. <laughs> Well, Miss May. <laughs> what now? Quite a show you put on for us, Mr. Wright. He knew that the clock was empty. Somehow he knew. I'm afraid you've forgotten one thing, however. Indeed, the clock is empty. As you say, it can't ring. However, we must ask, when was the clockwork removed? If it was after the witness heard the clock, then there is no contradiction. <laughs> what? <laughs> hmm, that's true. That is a possibility. The clock might have been emptied after she heard it. And that is exactly what happened, Your Honor. Well, Mr. Wright, can you prove when the clockwork was removed? Yes! Yes, we can! I have proof. <laughs> gotcha now, Edgelord. Wasn't it you who told me proof is everything? Well, I was listening. And now I'll show you the proof you like so much. The evidence that proves when the clockwork was removed is... It's, it's, it's in the log. Yes, present. What's up? It's called in the wild. Right? That presented it? That didn't present it? No! <laughs> oh no, I can't present. I just have to actually hit the buttons, it clearly says. That's a very cute <laughs> You have a girly phone! <laughs> wait, wait, th this isn't my phone, I swear! Listen. This is the defendant's cell phone, and it contains a recording. 
a recording of a conversation she had with the victim on the day of the murder. Order. The defendant's cell phone. Th this wasn't brought to my attention. Oh look, we are getting under Edgelord's skin here. Even got the shaking of the eyes. Let's go. Let's do this. Perhaps Detective Gumshu overlooked it? G Grumble. The good detective better remember he's up for evaluation soon. I gotta say, I'm starting to feel bad for the big fella. Let's hear the conversation. <laughs> it was already gone by the time this was recorded which was well before the witness even arrived at her hotel <laughs> well miss may would you care to explain this to the court just how did you know that weapon was a clock Isn't it obvious? I saw the clock before. Um, what store was that again? I go to so many. Toot, I forgot. Wink. So the witness had seen it before. That would make sense. Does the defense have any objections, Mr. Wright? Yes. The witness claimed she's seen it before. But this directly contradicts a piece of evidence. I'll try this. It's simple. I was never in any store. Ever. Why? A friend of mine made that clock. Only two exist in the world. And the other one... That isn't here is in police custody. Impossible. Everything is sold in stores. Miss May, I think it's high time you went shopping for a better excuse. <laughs> uh... <laughs> mm. Oh, excuse is not on sale today. <laughs> oh my gosh, absolutely tearing it up. Ooh. Oh. Mm. What is going? What's it to you, Porcupine Head? That stupid clock doesn't matter, okay? She did it, and she should die for it. Die! <laughs> Whoa, let's not get ahead of ourselves. This is a court of law, and the witness will remain calm. Hmm? Hmm? Oh? Oh? Oh ho 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 ho! Silly me! Did I, um, like, lose it? I guess I did. <laughs> S scary. Miss May, let me ask. Tell me, how did you know the weapon was a clock? We've been asking for five minutes. <laughs> hmm, oh dear. Does the defense have an opinion on this behavior? Okay, this is it. Yes, Your Honor. Allow me to explain how I see the truth of the matter. Miss April May, you knew the weapon was a clock because... I... I don't think she held it. I think she just heard about it. However, she had heard that it was a clock. That is correct, Your Honor. There is no other way she could have known the thinker was a clock. And I can show you the proof. Can I?
Well, let's do it. <laughs> Have a look at this. <laughs> I found this in Miss Maya's room. Mr. Wright, please explain to the court what this is. Miss April May, you were taken the victim. Miss Mia Faye's phone, were you not? Ooh. Ooh. Your Honor, this is irrelevant. I'm not entirely sure that is. Ooh. The judge got us. It troubles me that our witness was in possession of a wiretap. This is outrageous. Does the defense truly claim that the witness was taking her phone? Absolutely. Even if that was the case, which it's not, you still have to prove one thing. Did the victim ever say that the weapon was a clock on the phone? Can you prove that? I think not. Oh yeah, I think I can. It's simple. What? Here's my proof. The proof that the victim said, on the phone, that the weapon was a clock. Uh... I mean, this this is the obvious, right? Hang on, if I click into it, I can read through it. It's it's a clock. It's made to look like a statue. It tells you the time. Okay. The weapon was a clock. Oh no. Do I have that? I'm gonna I'm gonna go with that. We never mm. It's a statue that looks like yeah. I'm gonna try. Oh no. Music stopped. We're good. Progress. Am I wrong? Objection. Ooh. <laughs> Miss Faye. Oh, you lawyer. Jeez. It's no fair. All of you ganging up on me like that. Oh, I'm so. So I'm the bad girl. Is that it? Is that it? Yes. Really? Now to deal the final blow. I don't think she did it. Answer the question!
Ooh. Well, Miss May? Do you have an explanation for the court? Can you prove you had nothing to do with this murder, even though you taped her phone? Mr. Lawyer, I saw that evil, evil grin. You were probably thinking, Alex. <laughs> Damn, she's good. Well, you're not the first man who thought of that. And of course, I can and will. Jeez. You can't be serious. No way. Way. I say, way. Oh, and I assure you, I'm serious, Mr. Lawyer. Hm. Okay, so, the killing happened around nine at night. Why, that's just when I was getting room service from that sweet bell boy. R room service? Iced coffee, I believe it was. Iced coffee. You know, like normal coffee, but cold. Why would you get iced coffee at night? If you don't drink it quick, it melts, and then you have regular cold coffee. I iced coffee? I think I'm making this up. Ask the bellboy. Wink. Ergo, the witness was not at the scene. Was on scene at the time of the murder. Where does that leave us? It is my greatest pleasure to inform you that the witness appears to have been taping the victim's telephone. However, that is a separate crime with no bearing to the current case whatsoever. Her testimony stands. She saw the defendant, Maya Faye, commit the murder. No. They're going to let her just walk away. There's no way I can win this unless I tie Miss May to the murder somehow. Well, does the defense have anything to say? Um, well... I think you've sunk in quite low enough already. Objection. I object to him calling the ball boy. Wh why? What's your reason? Because I hold that the wiretipping had nothing to do with the killing. However, if you agree to one condition, I'll consent to calling this witness. Condition? If Miss April May's alibi is not called into question after you examine... Why? That is shady. That is shady beyond belief. And you'll recognize that Miss April May was not the killer, thus she is innocent. And thereby, you must also accept the verdict of guilty. That is so shady. Ugh. That is my condition. What? I'd better find something suspicious in that bellboy's testimony. <laughs> Otherwise, Maya will be declared guilty on the spot. What should I do? I'm not gonna give up. Alright, I've got nothing to lose except for, well, everything. Understood. I accept your condition. Hmm. Fool. You fell right into my trap. Uh. 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 Wait. Very well. The court calls the hotel bellboy to the stand. I believe we're ready for the witness to testify. <laughs> Back to right about a trap guard. He certainly does look like a bellboy. Why? You're not gonna serve us tea and crumpets in here? There's not enough to go around, jerk. I received your summons in the middle of work, sir. I'm happy to be a service. The tea sir, looks rather heavy, so without further ado, the witness may begin his testimony. Very good, sir. I'm the head bellboy at the fine Gatewater Hotel, in business for four generations. I believe I received a call after 8 in the evening from our guest, Miss May. Alright. She asked for an iced coffee to be brought to her room at 9 o'clock on the dot, sir. Alright. 
I brought it to her precisely that requested time, of course. And I delivered the iced coffee to our guest, Miss May herself. So, yeah, it's on the dot. And that means that at 9 o'clock on the dot, she was looking at him rather than at the actual murder. I see. The defense may begin its cross-examination. <laughs> right. I'm ready. I hope. Dear God. This is it. If I can't prove Miss May was involved with the murder somehow, May will be finished. Time to head, Bellboy. Alright, that's fine. I'm not gonna press that. It was after eight. On the dot. That's weird. Yes, I confirmed that detail several times. She was watching a program on the TV and wished to drink after she finished, sir. I brought it to her precisely. Uh, yes, that's the important part. How can you be so sure? Miss May was quite insistent that it be brought then. Oh, bellboy, see he. I'd like like iced coffee at exactly nine. Something like that, sir. Therefore, I knocked on the door at the crack of nine. Why would you be so particular about the time? Oh no, this isn't what I meant. Absolutely, sir. Absolutely? Yes, sir. As in, so very absolutely so. It's an endearing mannerism as mine. Well, <laughs> when I brought it in a room service, sir. She, the guest, sir, favored me with a, um, an embarrasser? Excuse me? Questioning more on that, even though it's not case-related. Embarrasser? Is that French for em embrace? It's French for kiss, sir. But not a French kiss, sir. More, more of a peck on the cheek. Why would she have done that? I believe, perhaps, she was momentarily swayed by my prim demeanor, sir. It was a moment I shall never, ever forget, sir. Sounds pretty fishy to me. I think our Miss May was up to something and wanted the bellboy to remember her. It's no good. There's nothing there. Is, is that it? Tiss, tiss. Finally, you understand. This bellboy has absolutely no reason to lie. Now, if you have any decency, you will end this rather tedious cross-examination here. It was a bit tedious. The witness may leave the stand. I can't let this happen, can I? No, we're going to give up here, and I hope that we can get the Miss May back on. Yeah. Okay, so the game's protesting for me. Got it. One last question! Your Honor, I must object. This charade of justice has gone on long enough. Now, now, Mr. Edgeworth. Alright, Mr. Wright. I'll give you one more question. Okay. This is really it now. This is my last chance. So what do I ask him about? Mm. Yeah, her bed was perfectly made. I don't think that's really relevant. I could ask about room service. I'm curious about the check-in, though. Curious. Why would I want to ask him about room service, though? Hmm... Oh, alright. Very well, sir. My first thought was when she was- that she was beautiful. 
beautiful person. She's just my type of girl. So it was a disappointment, really. I see. Oh, you love the voices. Oh, thank you so much. I appreciate it. What exactly was the disappointment? Oh, oh yes, this was the right answer. Oh my gosh. Well, I am not without charm, sir, but even I have little chance with her lover there. <laughs> dot, 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 exclamation. What did he say? What did you say? Ah, I, er, uh, rather quite. Spellboy, tell the truth now. Did Miss May check in with another person? I object. That was objectionable. <laughs> Objection overruled. The witness will answer the question. Er, uh, yes, I see. Why did you not mention this in your testimony? What? Well, sir, you were. You, you didn't ask. Nice try. That's the sort of thing you're normally supposed to mention. <laughs> uh, yeah, quite. Indeed. It was the, uh, good barrister there, Mr. Edgelord, who... <laughs> he asked me not to mention it if I wasn't specifically asked, sir. <laughs> we got his eyeballs shaking again, guys. Let's go. You, you fool. I've done it. I've won. Miss April May checked into a twin room with a man. Correct? Yes, sir. Then, when you brought them room service, you didn't see that man in the room? That's right, sir. Hmm. Your Honor, we have just learned of another person involved who may have been the murderer. In light of this new fact, I hold that it's impossible to judge the defendant. Wouldn't you agree, Mr. Edgelord? And who, Mr. Wright? Who was this other person? Simple. It was... The man who checks in with Miss May. <laughs> As has been previously revealed, Miss April May was taping the victim's phone, yet Miss May herself has the alibi at the time of the murder. However, that does not clear the man that was with her. The bell boy saw no one else in the room at the time of the murder. M my, what a convenient little setup, but it's too late. Too late? I suppose you'd like, you'd like it if it was too late, wouldn't you? After all, it was you who hid the presence of the other man from this court. Ugh! Ah, <laughs> oh, no music. We have progress, guys. Upstart. Amateur. These accusations are ludicrous. Enough. The court acknowledges the defense argument. I expect the prosecution and defense to look into this matter fully. I am I understood? Yes. <gasps> yes, Your Honor. That is all for today for the trial of Maya Fay. Court is adjourned. Nice. Mr. Wright. You were amazing in there. <laughs> really? I think I might be your newest fan. <laughs> yeah, I have the um the squeakiest chair in all existence. <laughs> and I was just doing my job, you know. <laughs> but again, that other attorney was pretty cool, too. No, 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 no. You take that back. You take that back. That face of his, with his eyes wide and trembling lips. No, don't go there. 
You were too good for him. Since Sherrod's at my spine. Hmm, if you say so. So, what happens with me? Do I get to go home now? Um, well... No, I don't think so. Not yet. Uh oh I see. But I got a great lead in today's trial. A lead? That man with Miss May, he's the key. Oh, I get it. What happened to Miss May after that, anyway? I heard they arrested her. I guess she's learning her charms won't work everywhere. She's probably at the detention center now. I may have to go down there later. Anyway, this case is far from closed. Yes, sir. I'm going to find out more about this man. Do you think he was the one who... Maybe so. Sis. Don't worry. I'll find him by tomorrow. I promise. Phoenix, right? Don't make promises you can't keep. I'm counting on you. I asked for a full record of April May's testimony. I thought it might come in handy during the trial tomorrow. But now that I have it, I'm not so sure. Most of her testimony was all lies. In fact, there's only one part that hasn't been stricken from the record. It dodged the attack, ran to the right, but she was caught and struck. I don't know how much good this will do me now. Anyway, time to hit the pavement and do some investigating. May doesn't belong in the detention center, and it's up to me to set her free. 